imagine Elon Musk coming out and saying that they have to put a halt to the production of Teslas or Joe Biden coming out and saying that the Green New Deal is now at a standstill because there's not enough silver. These are very real possibilities and I don't think people understand how severe and devastating a silver shortage would be for humanity as we try to make the world go green. There's just not enough silver and that's the bottom line. So in this video, I'm going to show you how serious this situation really is. Now make sure you're subscribed. I post daily videos giving you the newest, latest, freshest, most up-to-date recent information in the world of silver. You cannot be blindfully investing. You gotta stay up to date, especially in today's day and age, and I will do that for you. Now this is a summary of a presentation given by Keith Newmar from First Majestic Silver. This explains everything that I always talk about in my videos, which is the point of not enough silver for the world to go green. It's not just Keith Newmar that talks about this though. David Hunter, a lot of different people also mention it. But for some reason, people just can't wrap their head around this or how crazy this idea is or how impossible and unrealistic this idea is. So let's jump into this article. Keith starts by highlighting the difference between silver and gold. Silvers and TVs, solar panels, dishwashers, batteries, etc. And yes, gold is mainly a monetary metal. It's mainly used for coins, bars, necklaces, earrings, watches. Yes, there's some gold in cell phones and laptops. I used to scrap gold out of out of cell phones and laptops myself. But it's mainly it's mainly used for coins and, and jewelry, stuff like that. Silver, the exact opposite. So that's something important to note on. Now, he shares that silver is not like gold at all. It's actually the most misunderstood metal on the planet, which I also agree. Keith also points out the Green New Deal and how much it is being talked about. He then asks, how will they do it? How would they get all this metal that they need, right? They are not making enough silver today to meet this demand. Keith also points out how small these companies are. The top 50 mining companies on the planet have a market cap of $500 billion. For comparison, the top five tech companies have a market cap of $3.5 trillion. Now, this is another important thing too. Mike Maloney, which is another silver advocate, also sent a letter to Elon Musk urging him to buy silver right now because with Tesla, SpaceX, Solar City, Elon Musk is heavily into the tech biz. And if you're talking about $25 silver versus $100 silver, that's trillions of ounces. And Mike Maloney actually does the math in the article um, talking about how devastating this would even be for Elon Musk if he waits too long. So maybe Elon Musk is a undercover silver stacker. I hope he is because if not, the cost of production for Teslas is going to go through the roof. But without the 50 miners, none of these tech stocks would exist. Silver production has been dropping consistently for the past five years. The solar panel industry takes up 100 million ounces of silver, over 10% of the silver supply. And plus, solar panels only last for so long. In 2019, there were 90 million automobiles made. Cars take up 80 million ounces or more of silver. And by 2030, every automobile company is going to be an EV. They're going electric. So imagine over the next decade how much more silver we're going to need, including 5G towers, you know, PV cells, which is in solar panels, which is photovoltaics. You also have uh, silver lithium ion batteries, 5G towers. There's so many things that, that, you know, need silver, rely on silver. Silver is the most critical thing in the world, but we don't have enough of it. And when people finally realize that, but when I say around the year 2027, that's when silver's true price will come out. There is just not enough copper or silver being produced right now to meet the Green New Deal objectives. We need higher metal prices to incentivize miners to produce more. So in 2016, mining production peaked and it's been dropping ever since. Annual silver consumption is 1 billion ounces and 80% sourced from mining, 20% from recycling. And I do think recycling is going to play a bigger uh, factor, a bigger role in the upcoming decade especially when you see uh, companies like the Royal Mint announce that they're going to start recycling laptops and cell phones uh, in urgency, trying to get more silver since they also are having an extremely hard time finding silver blanks along with Perth Mint and the U.S. Mint setting record-breaking sales, admitting that there is a silver shortage. They publicly came out and mentioned that. 
The silver shortage isn't a myth anymore. In mining companies, they should come up with a different way to price their silver. Since silver is such a small market, it is easy for banks to keep it in range. You know, JP Morgan, the, the top mascot for price manipulation, spoofing. What they do is they place false buy or sell orders on these exchanges, cancel the order before it goes through, manipulating the price. And if you think that's a conspiracy, well, then you're wrong because three of their employees got sent to prison, not jail, prison. One of them even got sentenced for racketeering, and it's just a very messy situation. They've gotten fined up to $900 million, and this is backdating decades. They've been doing this, but also Merrill Lynch, the Dutch bank, also got um, caught spoofing as well. I'm sure it's a much bigger situation at play than just those three banks and i'm sure it goes way deeper than we could even fathom but it is going on now keith says that if he bets on lower silver prices and it goes up slightly they will lean into bet even more on uh, keeping the upside even more limited now we cannot electrify the world without oil and gas right keep buying physical silver is the recommendation like we talk about every day on this channel now here's the question how do banks manipulate the price Keith notes that they have no limit when they make bets against silver, right? Question, another question. Where do you see the price of silver going and is there any technology that could get in the way? Answer, there is no substitute for silver. It is the glue that holds the road together. Look at Tesla, for example. There are 6,000 battery cells in a Tesla. Every connection is silver. And yes, right, silver is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, even light sensitivity. Nothing can replace Silver. Copper is a somewhat close second in terms of electrical conductivity, but it's still the quality is so much worse than silver that nobody would ever use it. There's nothing else. We're talking about elements on the periodic table, right? We're, we're not talking about, oh, we could find something else. We're talking about something that is permanent, right? There's there's no other way. Silver is the most highly conductive metal, and it's going to stay that way. And as we advance in this new digital technological world, there's no way that we are not going to be able to use it. That's just, it's not possible. All we can do is try to find more, whether that's space mining, whether that's uh, stealing ours, gold confiscation, silver confiscation, right? It's happened time and time again throughout history with gold, why not silver, uh, or also mining innovation out of the ground, but also, like I said earlier, recycling. Question number two, silver is difficult to store in large amounts. So are the silver ETFs manipulated, or is there a way to own silver without storing it in your backyard? Answer, there are two major ETFs. One is the SLV, obviously, but Keith thinks there are some flaws with the ETFs. For example, back in February, the SLV took a lot of cash but couldn't get the amount of silver to back it. They had to go on paper market to balance it out. Number two, Keith recommends Sprott Silver ETF if you're going to buy a silver ETF. I don't recommend ETFs go physical. The saying of the stackers is if you can't hold it, you don't own it. What's the, the whole point of, of investing in precious metals is taking the control away from them and putting it into your own hands, literally. If it's still digital. If it's still just a number on a screen, then that's completely missing the whole point, the whole purpose of precious metals. You might as well go into crypto or stocks. So another question. You said to hold physical silver, so you do not recommend buying the miners. Answer. He isn't going to recommend miners, but he will share what he does personally. He holds physical silver, but he notes that buying a mining stock can turn into big gains if the timing is right. But you could also lose a lot of money if you're wrong. A trick is to look at management team, what they owe. You know, we're not going to go into that because just buy physical. So that is the article. Now, I'm sure many of you have watched my past videos and say, Silver Slayer, you're kind of reaching. I don't think this is that serious of a situation. There's always going to be enough silver. I can still go on the U.S. Mint and buy Eagles all day. And I can go to Atmex. It's not necessarily how you view it. You're still going to be able to go on Atmex and buy silver, but the price is higher because it's scarce. Why do you think there's no premiums on gold? Because gold isn't scarce. Low supply, high demand shoots the price up. That's why there's premiums, because it's scarce. That's why American Eagles have the highest premiums, because 
the the U.S. Mint ran out of silver in 2020, and that's exactly when the premiums started, was in 2020, when the U.S. Mint ran out, because there isn't enough, because there's a low supply and a high demand. So I really want people to understand that this is a reality. It's not, you don't got to bust out your tinfoil hat. No, it's not going to happen tomorrow. And that's another thing I think a lot of people misunderstand. They think when I talk about the silver shortage that within a couple of years, there's not going to be any more silver to exist. The shelves are, are going to be empty and you won't be able to find a single ounce. That's not, that's, you got to be logical, folks. This is something that's going to take a decade. Why I say triple digit silver by the year 2026, 2027 is because that's when people will notice it the most. We're talking about years down the line. But by that time, since every automobile company is going to be electric by the year 2030, by that time, the silver shortage will be inevitable. That's when even the big tech companies will realize the seriousness of it, the severity. Right now, they don't. Right now, it's only the U.S. Mint announcing the silver shortage. That's just investment demand. That's not the industrial sector yet. When the industrial sector realizes it, that's when everything comes into play. Producers turn into the consumers. The consumers turn into the producers. The, pe the, the people like you and I that want the silver will be selling it to the people that need the silver, right? We just want it. They need it to make the newest, latest iPhone. They need it to make the world go green. The world relies on it. We're talking about global warming. We're talking about climate change. That's going green. That's the purpose. But what if we can't do that? The world's health, the sake of the world, isn't able to, to come to that solution because there's not enough silver. And when people realize that is when I say the real price will come out. A lot of people don't even incorporate this when they talk about why silver is so explosive. They'll just go into the dollar index. They'll just talk about, you know, um, they'll, they'll talk about CPI data. They'll, they'll talk about, you know, the collapsing dollar and they'll talk about inflation and yada, yada. They won't even mention the silver shortage, which is just so fascinating to me because not only does it show um, the disconnection of people realizing the full story and how it's much deeper, but also that it shows so many other reasons why you should invest into silver. We're not just throwing all our money into one thing. Silver is explosive for so many different reasons, right? Plus, it's a safe haven. You're you're putting your the fake money into real money. It's like putting your money in a time capsule, preserving your wealth. If you keep that money in a bank account, it's slowly burning away, or nowadays quickly. So it's it's just the perfect investment. It makes the most sense. It's the most explosive. Gold does, and when we're talking about the green revolution, gold really doesn't have a part in that. It's silver that they need. It's not gold. It's silver. Silver is needed in these solar panels and these electric vehicles, not gold. So on that note, especially since silver is a much smaller market than gold, it even makes the situation worse since silver is 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 not really recycled and since it's a byproduct meaning they find it by accident they're looking for gold lead or zinc that makes the situation even worse if they find some silver they'll take it but they're not looking for it uh, an even worse part of this situation is that most silver gets thrown away gold is recycled re-scrapped because one it's profitable to do so it's 80 times more valuable but also since it's used for jewelry and necklaces and, and coins, it's sold and pawned and turned into more jewelry and necklaces and coins. And, you know, every ounce of gold that gets dug up is going to stay in circulation for, what, half a century, maybe even longer. That ounce of silver that gets dug up will be thrown away within 20 years. And that's because silver is used for things that will only be used once, right? A laptop thrown away. Recycling isn't that big yet, like I just mentioned, or windmills, or whatever the case is. Silver's mostly thrown away, uh, and we need silver the most. If, 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 if tables were turned, and silver was like gold used for only jewelry and necklaces, this wouldn't be a problem because it's easily recyclable, right? So everything is just like the stars are aligning. Everything makes sense, and if you don't see it, 
by now watching this video, then I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you. And that's why I said in the intro of this video, I really hope that watching this, you'll finally understand. If you're still watching right now, if you're listening to me say this to you, then you get it. You didn't click off the video within 20 seconds thinking you know it all or click off within 20 seconds thinking that I have nothing valuable to say. You're open-minded. You want to learn. And that translates into your success as an investor. I'm sure a lot of these people think they know it all and that they don't need to know anymore or just blatantly just just dismiss this whole case thinking that we're all crazy without the, you know, without even giving it a chance. And that's another thing is when I say stuff, a lot of times people, what they'll do, the people that write bad comments on my videos, they won't even watch the video. They'll, they'll read the title or, or look at the thumbnail or hear what I'm about to say and won't even let me pitch my case. And, and they'll just, they'll just go off of that. And I can always, I always know they don't watch the video because everything they say in the comment is something that I mentioned in the video. <laughs> I mean, I swear that happens nine times out of 10 when they try to say something against me. It's exactly what I'm saying in the video. So anyways, yeah, make sure you subscribe, especially if you've watched this long into the video. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a happy Mother's Day. This is Silver Slayer. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.